here I'm going to have to whisper while you speak. Eh, bueno, la primera pregunta, si vemos a un fotógrafo eh, dando sus primeros pasos e intentando abrirse camino, yo no sé si, si esto de alguna manera cuenta su propia historia y si fue el aliciente para aceptar el proyecto. Here we see a photographer really trying to make his way in the world of photography. Good. Does this remind you of something? Has it got to do with you? A photographer trying to make his way, trying to get a big story done? Well, I, I obviously I, I recognize the, um, the struggle when you start to get your photographs published. Um, but I, I never, you know, was a red carpet photographer or something, but uh, I, I understand the situation. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I was attracted to the film. In algunos momentos de la película se ve que que la, la inmediatez y la in, casi la improvisación del momento, ¿no? eh, de esos momentos surgen las mejores fotografías. At times we see immediacy, improvisation in the films, in the, in the film. Such moments perhaps bring out the best part of situations for things like that, and in the film as well, for, photog for, for taking photographs. Yeah, I, 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 I always feel that um, an intuitive approach is really great for photography. It's much harder in film, but... Um, um, and then a stock, of course, was more a documentary photographer than I am. So he he sees situations and reacts to it. No sintió, digamos, no sé si miedo al introducirse en una vida tan tan icónica. Weren't you afraid or intimidated by getting into such an iconic life? Um, well, you know you obviously have to work with people's perception of James Dean. Um, and their idea about James Dean is based on the movies they see, whereas we film in James Dean outside of these movies. So you're always going to have a little bit of a struggle, I think. Um, but uh, that meant that <coughs> the actor we're going to choose for James Dean had to uh, make his belief very quickly on in the film that you know he is that guy, and, and I, I like to think that Dane DeHaan uh, you know did an amazing job. Quería preguntarle precisamente por cómo se ha trabajado esa relación, ¿no? Entre Pattinson y DeHaan. So, precisely, I wanted to ask you about that relationship between Pattinson and and DeHaan. Was it good? How did you work? How did you work with it? You mean on the set? In El Plateau. Sí, incluso a la hora, digamos, de, de trabajar y de, de ensayar y de crear el perfil de personaje. Yes, sí, uh, and also in rehearsing, yeah. creation of the character, how did you do it? Okay, well, they were quite different kind of actors, you know. Dane DeHaan is much more academic kind of form, whereas um, Rob is more um, intuitive, you know, and uh, more insecurity there. But that was great for the roles, and... Um, um, I, I really enjoyed working with both because there was a real great young energy on the set. It's, um, I really, I really enjoyed that. Same with Control, I had a similar feeling with Control. There was, there was great energy on the set, and um, um, yeah. Sorry, I think that's answer that. Supongo que te contestó. Yes. Bueno, yo me preguntaba viendo la película. ¿Qué retrato o qué fotografías habría hecho Corbin de James Dean si hubiera tenido la oportunidad? When I was watching the film, I, I couldn't help wondering what photographs would Corbin have taken of James Dean had he had the opportunity to. Yeah, well, that's for me is also an, uh, an, an open question. I, um, I, I like to think that Dennis Stock did great pictures because they were documentary like. And because of that, you got a real sense of the situation, of the era, of James Dean in his environment. It's, it's more important now than if you would have a, doc, uh, uh, a portrait photographer doing pictures of him. What, ah, what do you admire of Dennis Stock's world view? Well, I, I guess just what I point out, he has a very sharp eye sí, for situations. And he, you know, was an important photographer in the 50s of the documentary style in which we told stories in the magazines. Like W. Eugene Smith, 
Yeah. Who is one of my favorite photographers, of course, period. Um, uh, and, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I, I think. I like his eye. It's, it's also quite a funny eye, you know. That's not, that's not so apparent in the film, but his other work, uh, there was also humor to it. Like Cartier Bresson, like. Like? Like Henri Cartier Bresson. Como Henri Cartier Bresson. Yo me pregunto si las fotografías de alguna manera hacen inmortal, ¿no? Y icónico. Un personaje que cree que hace el cine con esas figuras. Photographs make people icons and immortal. What does cinema do to people? Uh, they make uh, people immortal. Be iconic. <laughs> yeah. Just the same, you know. It's just iconic, I see. different way of distribution, you know. I, I think so James Dean became iconic because of the movies he made. So and the photographs just cement that. They help you realizing. I think that's how it works. You know. I think if he made really bad movies, the pictures could only help him so far. Y en esta relación entre los dos, en ese intento de, del personaje de Dennis, ¿no? de Pattinson, por, por encontrar ese, eh, el retrato perfecto y el momento, yo no sé si él ha tenido, al, si tiene algún momento de conexión y si se, y, si se siente identificado con ese personaje. This search on Dennis's part to find that perfect moment, that perfect situation, uh, which is his, his work as a photographer, I don't know if you as well can identify very much with that search, that constant search for that. Yeah, I think so, you know, sí, if, you, sí mm. if you're not always on a bit of an edge, I, I think the work might suffer. Me pregunto si vamos a ver a Corbin dirigiendo, llevando a cabo eh, proyectos sobre biofix, vamos, sobre, sobre vida, sobre otros. Are we going to see Corbin doing other works, biopics of interesting people? Are we going to continue to see that? Yeah, uh, well, in a way, this is not much of a biopic, but, uh, you know, I, I, the next film is also a story based on true events. It's not a biopic, but it's based on, on, on true events uh, that played in America in the late 40s, early 50s. Can you give us more? Yeah, no, uh, you can uh, Google it. It's um, a book. I'm going to do a film of called Devil in the Grove. El Diablo en, 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 en el campo. Yeah, like the orange groves. You know, oh, naranjal. Diablo en el naranjal. And it's, it's the writer is called Gilbert King. Es, está basado en un libro de Gilbert King. Yeah. I mean, I can, t uh, I mean, I can talk contar, more about it, but it's, it, uh, it's about... Um, se trata de it's a court case, basically, about four black kids who get accused of raping a white girl in Florida in the late 40s. Negros, and there's, a, there's a, I mean, there's all kind of, uh, you know, the Ku Klux Klan is involved, and, and the NAACP from New York comes down to Florida. Uh, the lawyer of the case is called Fergus Marshall. He is an incredibly important person who won a big court case later called the Brown versus the Board of Education, which gave equal education Era rights for everybody. This is a major stepping stone in America. Mundo, and he later became um, the first black African-American to become Supreme Court judge. De la Corte Suprema Negro en Estados Unidos. And the film after that. 